Hey there! Today I wanted to show a video of Magnus Carlsen's first game ever recorded to the public. Magnus has the white pieces here and opens with d4. We get knight f6 going for a very flexible opening. And Magnus responds with c4 going for a queen's gambit type setup. Uh, so Buddy responds with the Benoni at c5. And Magnus just defends his pawn. Buddy takes. Magnus takes back with the knight. And we get e5, kicking that knight away. Now, it might be tricky to figure out what to do with this pawn pushing e5 so early, but the opponent has a plan for that. Magnus moves the knight closer into the position, and d5, just saying, hey, take my pawn. I want a really open position, and I want that knight to be weaker. Magnus is like, all right, I'm up for the challenge. And then Buddy just develops bishop, doesn't even try to take back with the knight or the queen. So Magnus goes back, defending the pawn, and now Buddy castles. And if you look at the position, Black's already leading in development. Magnus only has a knight out, and, you know, Buddy already has a knight and a bishop out. It's not looking good. Starkfish says is equal, but it'd be easier to play Black here. Magnus decides to blunt the bishop, uh, so Buddy pushes the pawn. And now this pawn isn't going anywhere. No pawns can defend that pawn, so what are you doing, Magnus? Magnus is like, h3, I want to stop any knight to or bishop to c g4 ideas. And Buddy's like, alright, well I'm going to defend my pawn. Uh, Magnus pushes g4 himself, and now we get a nice rook lift. Rook's already in the center, and it can tra like go to the uh, king side at any point. It's also targeting this pawn in case Buddy wants to capture. So Magnus defends the pawn, and we get a knight developing. Now Magnus makes an inaccuracy. Uh, it's the bishop and queen battery. They're, it's not really staring at much. That pawn can easily be defended. This pawn can't get blocked right away, but uh, Buddy goes back with the knight, which is always a funny looking move, and now it's about equal. So that inaccuracy wasn't actually so bad. Magnus develops the knight instead of following through with the plan of pushing the pawn and uh, aiming at that king. And now it's too late. The pawn's blocked. Magnus has to figure out a new plan. Uh, so Magnus goes back, didn't want to lose the bishop pair. And now the queen is already developed to a nice square. It's pinning this pawn, and if you castle, it's not looking good for your king. Queen's going to take that pawn, then, you know... It's just not going to end well if Magnus castles. Magnus knows that, though, so Magnus decides, Hey, you know what? I need to get rid of some pieces. Let's trade this bad knight for a good knight. And his opponent was just like, Oh, yeah, no, we can do that. I'm still going to kick your butt. And Magnus recaptures with the queen. And now the queen's getting attacked. But that's just a free pawn, isn't it? Well, now his opponent decides... All right, move that queen again. I got an open file for my rook, uh, and you got to move your queen again. You're not doing so good in the development department, so yeah. Magnus goes back because there's not many moves, and Buddy develops a knight closer to his attack. Magnus moves the queen again. You know you're doing really good when all you're doing is moving your queen. Uh, Buddy goes back, so I mean Magnus had something. Oh, now we get a blunder. What should have happened was Magnus had to take more space on the queen side. Uh, like, say, a3, a5, b4, takes, takes, takes. And Magnus would be doing fine here. Uh, it would have had a nice open file for the rook. Anyways, that doesn't happen. And instead, Magnus pushes the d-pawn. So, now that pawn's pinned to the queen, and Magnus makes another blunder. What should have Magnus done? Well, Magnus could have taken more space. Uh, also, queen to, uh, moving the queen would be a good idea. Uh, just getting there to that pin. Uh, anyways, Magnus takes that, and now it runs right into the bishop. 
So there's no way of saving that knight. So Magnus takes the own knight. And now that knight gets taken targeting the rook. So the rook moves. And now that pawn gets taken defended by that rook. That queen isn't looking so good, is it? Oh, so Magnus decides to attack the rook. And his opponent attacks the queen. Well, I mean, the queen is long range defending that rook, so you can't take it. So Magnus is like, all right, well, I'm going to have to take a pawn for my troubles. Doesn't really help because that rook gets captured. But Magnus does capture a rook uh, for a bishop and it ruins Black's pawn structure near the king. So after takes, Magnus decides to go back, targeting that pawn, maybe get a check in. And the opponent just takes away squares from the uh, white king. Uh, so in response, Magnus is like, all right, well, maybe if I get my rook into the party, I can do something. So Magnus takes a pawn, and now Magnus makes a check, moves the king, and attacks the rook. How are you defending that rook, you might ask? With the bishop. And the bishop, well, the bishop can't get captured because queen to h1 would be checkmate. So Magnus Carlsen resigns in this position. Uh, Magnus, of course made so much improvement after this game is currently the world champion and it's it's it i i was just ecstatic to find this game uh magnus was only about nine or ten years old so his chess skill wasn't all quite there just yet but he did still play very well a lot better than i would have played at that age Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I offer chess lessons. You can message me via Lee Chess. My username is SkillerEP. It'll be in the comments section, and I, I hope you have a great day.